fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust and a hearty, Io Silver, the Lone Ranger. days of the western United States, outlaws roamed the new territory and defied the forces of law and order. It was not until the masked rider of the plains started his great fight for justice that the honest settlers knew the blessing of peace and security. The Lone Ranger's strength and courage, his daring in the face of danger, and his devotion to the cause of right against might, these were the forces that finally made possible the winning of the West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for Elkhorn Basin. There's going to be trouble. Hello, Silver, away! <laughs> Day in and day out, Matilda Prindle sat in the rear of her husband's general store, rocking and knitting as Abe waited on their customers. One morning, Tonto, the Lone Ranger's faithful Indian companion, entered the little shop. Abe greeted him and... Good morning to ye, Injun. Good morning. How? Oh, now can't you say a few words more? What's your name and where are you from? I reckon you're a stranger in Elkhorn Basin, ain't ye? Uh-huh. Me, stranger. Me, Tonto. Well, Tonto, what do you want? You got sugar? Matilda? Yes, Abe. We happen to have any sugar in stock? Can't tell just yet, Abe. Ask the Redskin something more. Yeah. So you says your name is Tonto, huh? Mm, that right. Now, let me see. What fur did you want this sugar? I want it for horse. And him fine horse. Like sugar. Hear that, Matilda? <laughs> it's all right, Abe. We got the sugar. Let him have what he wants. <laughs> yeah, thought you'd say that. Ain't no more in the store, though. You'll have to go get some out of the barrel and back. Uh-huh. You savvy, Tonto, my wife there, she can't see nothing. Oh, her blind? My eyes can't see, but... I reckon I can see a lot with my mind that other folks misses. Uh. When a stranger comes in, she can tell just by his voice whether he's honest or crooked. Yes. Mm, that heap good. She listens, and if she says we got what that umbre wants, then it means he's all right and his credit is good if he ain't got the cash handy to pay with. But if she says he ain't on the level, then he can't get no credit at all. Oh, me pay cash. Cash? Uh, For land's sake. You hear that, Matilda? Hey, Buco, get that sugar done up before he changes his mind. How much you want? Mm, me want five pounds. Yes, yeah, sure, five pounds. Cash money. Go away. Sit down if you'd like to, Tonto. Uh. Uh, you're... Huh? Now, who's this? 
Hey, uh, who's running this door? I want some tobacco and I'm in a hurry. Come on, old lady, get up on your feet and trot it out. Yes, sir, I'll get it. My husband's busy, but uh, I'll get it for you. I know just where to put my hands on it. Uh, give me two plugs. You ain't been here before, have you? What's that to you? Uh, give me that tobacco and stop the talk. Uh, I, I'm getting it. Uh, just a second now. Well, not there. It's on the shelf below. What's the matter with you, huh? Thought you knew where it was. Can't you see? No, I can't. That's so. Then what right you got running a store? Body's got to make a living. Here's your tobacco. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Just put it down, huh? I'll pay you next time I'm through this way. Oh, but mister, Reckon I... Reckon this will teach you how not to be running a store. Please, I... Maybe next to... time you'll know better. <laughs> well, goodbye and thanks again, old lady. You stop. But... Well, doggone if it ain't a redskin. What's ailing you, Injun? You not take tobacco. No. Put it back. Say, you sure got your nerve, Redskin, talking to me that way. There, stay in the saddle for I'm tempted to bust you. Away. I... Hey, let go! You do what Hunter say. Why, you... Leave tobacco. My arm, you busted. Uh -oh. There's a dog on the back. Now, let me go, won't you? All right. You go now. Yeah. Well, I'll teach you. Drop gun. Oh. Now, you go. No, Hunter, no, don't hit me again. I'll... Uh... Just leave me. Pick up my gun. You not pick up gun. You not need it. You go. All right, all right. I ain't gonna fight with no loco winch, and I'm a going. Uh, here. Here, gun. You take it. Gracious sakes alive, Tom. Easy sugar, Injun. What was that shouting I heard? What was all the noise about? Oh, Abe, a crook came in and asked for some tobacco. And when I gave it to him, he wasn't going to pay for it. If it hadn't been for Tonto, he'd have took the tobacco and, and gone. See, is that so? Um, him leap gun. You take it. By golly. If... Abe. What? Oh. Uh, Matilde, what's the trouble? Uh, this gun. Uh, what about it? Abe. Abe, look at it. Tell me what's carved into the handle. My fingers wouldn't lie to me, but tell me. What do you... Well, I'll be... Is it... Is it... Matilde, this is Kurt shooting at Oh, I knew it. I knew it. It's his. His initials. Here they are. Carved just like when he put them there. Our boy. Abe, how did that man get his gun? How could he have took it from Kurt? Do you think maybe... Maybe he killed him? Matilde... Are you certain sure that wasn't Kurt that was in here? Oh, no, Abe, that wasn't Kurt. That wasn't my boy. I'd know Kurt's voice anywhere, anytime. I've been hearing it. I've been hearing it every night. <laughs> and whistling to me, just like he used to. I'll never forget the way he used to whistle, Oh, Susanna. No, Abe, that wasn't Kurt. Then what did he do with Kurt? If we only knew... Where is Kurt? How would that fella come by our boy's gun? What, what's our boy been doing all these years since since him and me fought? Matilde, if I could only reach him and tell him to come back home, I'd, I'd be the happiest man alive. Tonto left the store and rode to the camp where the Lone Ranger was waiting for him. One glance at the Indian's face, and the masked man knew something was wrong. Tonto, I can see you brought news. What is it? A young fella named Kurt. Maybe him get killed. Kurt? Him son, fella run store. Yes? Him leave home long time ago. Tonto, you must mean Kurt Prindle. Huh? How did you happen to hear about him? Oh, Tonto take gun from fella. Fella get gun from Kurt. Mean he had a gun that had belonged to Abe Prindle's boy? That's right. And you took that gun from someone? Huh? How did that happen? Oh, him bad fella. Take tobacco from store and not pay. Tonto hit him. I see. Miss Prindle, her blind. Blind? Mrs. Prindle? Uh. I didn't know that. Not true. Her heap good woman. Everyone speaks well of her. Tonto, if the gun you took from that fellow once belonged to Kurt, then it's likely that he knows where Kurt is now. Uh. There's nothing that would make the Prindles happier... And to discover his whereabouts. Oh, make him heap happy. This man you had the fight with, did you notice where he went when he left the store? 
You think you could pick up his trail? Huh? Tonto trail him. And that's what we'll do. Here, Silver. Here, Scout. We'll keep our camp here and return to it when we're finished. You ready? Uh huh? Be ready. Then come. Get him up, Scout. Hail, Silver! Hooray! The Lone Ranger and Tonto returned to the little store and picked up the trail of the man with whom Tonto had fought. Several days later, the same man entered a shack just outside the town of Meredith. Hello, Butch. Hi there, Barton. You made a right quick trip. Yeah. What'd you do while I was gone, Butch? Plenty. Huh? I've been seeing to it we can get away from here in a hurry when we get ready to move on. What'd you learn over to Elkhorn? Yeah, folks over there ain't the kind to ask too many questions. We can hang around there for a little while without no trouble. Good enough. How much you reckon old Mosby keeps in that safe of his? Well, quite a bit from what I could find out. Likely a thousand, anyhow. You figure we can handle the kid? I can. Where's he at now? In the back room. He's expecting to see you. I told him you'd be wanting to have a talk. Yeah, then I guess I'll get it over with. Might as well see that things are set. Hi there, young fella. Barton. Huh? I've been waiting for you. I want to know just what kind of a game you and Butcher are up to. Now, you've been working for Mosby. Well? Before that, you traveled around for quite a spell. What if I did? You done some singing and such in cafes round and about to earn your living. Do you come here and got a steady job? Go on, Barton. Get to the point. Don't worry, Butch, I am. Now, listen, Kurt. You owe me and Butch plenty, and we aim to collect. And Prano. Kurt, you're going to work with us. You're going to open Mosby's safe and take out the cash he's got in there. Like fun, I you am. Will, you will, Mr. Mosby's been doggone good to me, and I don't aim to double-cross him. Kurt. Huh? Would you rather do like we say, or would you rather... Rather what? Mosby didn't live much longer. You, you mean you... What we do, we ain't saying. But you ain't so slow. Ought to be able to make a good guess. So which way is it going to be? Uh, yeah. You open the safe and take the cash, and everything will be all right. You got the combination. But if we try it... Well, there's likely to be shooting. Somebody likely to get bad hurt. If I don't want Mr. Mosby killed. Then do like you're told. But but if I did, he'd be bound to know it was me. Nobody else has that combination but him. That ain't no concern of ours. You wait till the night. And when he turns in, you follow orders. But, but, but and if I... you don't, well, you already know what maybe might happen. I, I'll be jailed for a thief. <laughs> Shucks, if you're caught, you can tell him about us, if you're a minder. He'd never believe me. Oh, sure he won't, but you can tell him anyhow. I, Think I... it over, Kurt. While you're thinking, just keep this in mind. Either you open that safe, or Mosby dies. That night, in the room behind Mosby's office, Kurt sat beside his employer. The young man was obviously nervous, and Mosby noticed it. Kurt. Uh, uh, what, Mr. Mosby? What's troubling your son? Don't you feel good? Uh, yes, sir. I, I feel all right. <laughs> Don't have to serve me, lad. We're friends. You got a home anyplace, Kurt? Yeah. Yeah, I, I got a home. Where? Over <laughs> to Elkhorn Basin. That close? Why ain't you never rode over there? Pa and me had a fight a long time ago, Mr. Mosby. I, I ain't never been back. Oh. Uh, Mr. Mosby. Yeah? Uh, how much cash you keeping in the safe now? <laughs> Worried about it? Well, I don't blame you. There's 1200 in that there iron box. If, if, if I ask you something kind of funny, would you promise not to just laugh at me? Huh? Uh, I wonder if you'd give me the loan of that 1200 <laughs> <laughs> Hey, ain't you getting mighty ambitious? What's up? Uh, found some young lady you got your eye on? Figure to buy a place of your own, get hitched, and uh, settle down? No, that ain't it. What in tarnation? Mr. Mosby, I can't explain, but you'll have to believe me. I just gotta have that cash. Hmm, sounds like maybe you're in trouble. I... But I ain't gonna ask questions where they ain't wanted. Tell you what I'll do. Give me a little time, and I'll think it over. But Mr. Mosby... Now, lad, nothing valuable was ever lost by taking time on it. Oh, well, reckon I'll say good night. Getting mighty sleepy. Mr. Mosby, I, Huh? I wish I could tell you. Huh? Tell me what? Never mind. I, I guess it just wouldn't do any good. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes... 
Please permit us to pause for just a few moments. story. On the same evening Kurt had tried to borrow Mosby's money, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached the end of the trail they'd been following. The masked man spoke softly to his companion. Tonto, this is as close as we'll take the horses. Ah, horse cow. Oh, oh, <laughs> the trail continues to that shack, all right. Huh. Not right. I wonder if Kurt could be there. Maybe. Come, we'll go the rest of the way on foot. Oh. Stay here, old fellow. There's a light in there, Kimasabi. Smoke coming from the chimney. Mm, somebody there, all right. That window's open. Oh. We'll have a look inside. Here, this way. Two men. Is one of them the fellow you saw at the store? Oh, that's him, there. Tough looking, all right. And if that other fellow was Kurt... What do you think? Then I'm disappointed. He looks as much a criminal as his friend. Oh. Let's keep quiet, Kimasabe. Perhaps we can hear what they're saying. Pardon? Ought to be just about time. Eh? What's that? Ought to be just about time, did you hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah. Reckon it is. You figure Kurt will go through with it? Sure he will. He don't much like stealing. No, but neither does he like to think of anything happening to Mosby if he don't. He thinks a heap of that old man. Yeah. He'd rather go to jail than see us drill the old fella. Uh-huh, I think he would at that. And if he's caught, tells the law he robbed a safe just to keep us from shooting his boys. Huh? <laughs> Who's to believe him? Well, well, Butch, I reckon it won't be long till we're splitting that 1,200 between us. <laughs> <laughs> Tonto, did you hear that? Uh, you hear him. We'll have to act fast. Uh, what we do? I'm not sure. But first, uh -huh. we're going back to the horses and riding to Mosby's. Come, we'll have to make time. The confidence of the two outlaws was justified. Having waited only long enough to give his employer time to fall asleep... Kurt opened the huge iron safe and swiftly emptied it. A few moments later, he closed it again. Have to hurry. Have to get out of here. Doing this just to save Mr. Mosby, but if he was to catch me, I'd, I'd feel like a dirty dog. But Mosby had been made uneasy by his conversation with the young man. He had not gone to sleep as Curtis expected... And when the outer door closed, he rose from his cot and made for the door to his office. I heard something. Somebody was out there. Who could it be? I... The safe. Open. The cash gone. Kurt was asking to borrow it. If he sold from me... Kurt, where are you, Kurt? Kurt, where are you? Kurt! Hi, Kurt! Kurt leaving here. He must have taken the money from that safe. Oh. He still lived to save that old man's life. Not right. And Mosby will never believe him. Tell her there's just one thing to do. and has to be done in a hurry. You got a plan? Barton was just about my size. Uh -huh. And he was dressed enough like me for anyone to mistake us have seen only in the dark. Mm. What you do? I'm going inside there. Do you know where the sheriff's home is? No. Don't or not know. Well, it's next to the last place down this street and on this side of the street. Uh -huh. Get there as fast as you can. If he's turned in, get him up. Tell him he's wanted in Mosby's office at once. Don't to do it. Tell him Mosby's been robbed. Uh -huh. That you're certain you saw the thieves head for Barton's place. Me tell him. All right, then go. Uh -huh. Get him up, Scout. Get him up. Get him up. Now to go inside. Mask. Guns. What's that? Mosby, don't move. Who are you? What do you want? You'll never find out. 
You want to hear When that? I saw you to waken, I came back to warn you. Warn me? Stay where you are, Mosby. Don't come closer. But I want... You're not to go to the sheriff until morning. If you do, well, you'll likely be sorry for it afterwards. Then, then you rob my safe. Go back to bed and keep still about this. Or my partner and I will be back. There's two of you. And both of us mean what we say. Adios. Hey, wait! <laughs> The Lone Ranger raced away from Mosby's shack in the night. Meanwhile, following the Lone Ranger's instructions, Tonto rode Scout at full gallop toward the sheriff's home. Uh, me get sheriff. Full scout home. Oh. Hello. Wake up. Wake up. What in thunder, Ranger? Sheriff, you come out. For God's sakes, who are you yelling like a Comanche? Hey, Iron Engine. Don't move, Red Skinner. You not reach for gun, Sheriff. State your business, Injun. You, Make it good or I'll You get you. horse. You ride to Mosby's. Huh? There's no time to wait. You do like Tonto say. Listen, Injun. I've been sheriff of this here town for nigh on to ten years. I got my guns right here. And no owner Injun is going to tell me what to do. You not do like Tonto say. Then Tonto act. Hey, don't go in there. Hide that gold. Nah. Now me got gun. You do like Tonto say. Don't go on, Injun. Where you got horse? Out and back in the corral, where'd you figure? Good, we go to Mosby's. Injun, slack up, will you? Don't go at all. You go. All right, all right, I'll ride with you. But first, I gotta put on my boots. Uh, you get boots fast. They're right here beside the bunk. You hurry up. I'm hurrying. You get boots on pronto. We go to Mosby's. Was you holding that gun engine? Not me. Hey, Mosby! Sheriff, you come at last. I've been robbed. You warned? Two of them. Robbed my safe of all the cash there was. A masked gent held a gun on me and said not to move, to go back to bed. Well, I'll be dogged. Engine, I'm right sorry you had to drag me over here because I wouldn't believe you. Ah, uh, your gun, Sheriff. You may be needed. I sure will. Your horse ready, Mosby? Just saddled it up. And, Sheriff... I know just where to head for. You do, huh? Yeah, I couldn't see that hombre's face on account of the mask. But I got a good idea of his size and build, and I know right where he is this very minute. The sheriff and Mosby started out with Tonto. And at that very moment, in the shack with Butch and Barton, Kurt had just turned over the stolen money. Fellas... Now, now, will you go away and stay away and never bother Mr. Mosby no more? <laughs> maybe. But but you promised you would. Uh, uh, maybe we'll be staying around to watch you go to jail. Oh, you... When the law catches you, you going to tell them about us? You said I could. Uh -huh. <laughs> but we've changed our minds. If you do, maybe we won't leave Mosby alone after all. Then I won't tell. I won't say a word. You won't have to worry at all. Just promise you'll leave him be. Sure, kid. We promise. Barton, I reckon this is just about the easiest pickings we ever found. Got your share put away? Uh-huh. So have I. <laughs> All right, kid, I reckon it's time you cleared out of here and got... What the? A masked man! Don't be your guns and I'll drill you. You won't do that. Watch out, he's got his cover. Up with your hands. What in thunder do you want? This a hold up? No. Well, then what do you... One hold up for tonight is enough. Kurt, take the guns. I, uh... Hurry, man, there's no time to lose. Shoot him, Kurt, shoot him! He's not going to shoot the man who came here to save him from a charge of robbery. What's that? Here's an extra mask. Put it on Barton there. Huh? Go on, go on. B but I don't understand. You I... don't have to. Just do as you're told. Hey, get that mask away from Martin, me. Martin, you'll stand still. Doggone you. There it is. Good. Now then, listen to me. What? I know the entire truth about this. These men are the real thieves, not you. We never stole no cash. Quiet. Kurt, I'm going to give you a chance to clear yourself. So you can return to your parents who are waiting for you back at Elkhorn Basin. Waiting for me? The quarrel you had with your father has been long forgotten and forgiven. You can make their lives happy again by going home once more. But I'm a thief. I'm going to be jailed. I can't go home. Do what I say. Huh? Exactly as I say. I don't and understand. And that needn't bother you one moment. Tonto was leading the sheriff and Mosby toward the shack. 
At a signal from the faithful Indian, they reined in their mounts. And... Oh, Scott. Oh, 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 is that you? You come. This year's Martin Shack, all right. If it was him and that partner of his that robbed you, Mosby, they'll get everything they got coming to them. And that's a promise. That Barton was clever. If it hadn't been for the engine seeing him, the way he disguised his voice back there at my place, I would never have suspected him. Especially masked like he was. All right. Inside. Heist your hands, you crook. Sheriff, wait. It's Kurt. He's got him covered. That's a sheriff. And that's the man I seen at my office, sure enough. That's Barton. He's still got his mask on. I wasn't near your place. Hey, wait, listen. The both of you shut up or I'll fix you so you can't talk. You'll find all the stolen cash in their pocket, Sheriff. I thought so. Well, that'll send them to jail for a good long time. Oh, wait a minute. This is Get rain, fellas. Hear me when I told you to shut up? You... That's better. Now, March. You're heading for the lockup. Not you, Kurt. Sheriff can handle them. You stay here and tell me all about it. Several days later at Elkhorn Basin. Matilde. Yes, Abe. You know how sometimes you told me it seemed our boy was real near to you, even if he wasn't? I mean, uh, well, that is... Oh, shucks, you know what I mean. Uh-huh. Well, tonight I... Uh, yes? I feel the same way. I don't know how to explain it, but I've been thinking about Kurt the whole evening. So have I, Abe. So have I. And I, uh... Matilda, watch that. You hear it? Hear what? That whistling. The tune he's a-whistling. That was always Kurt's favorite tune. And he's whistling just like Kurt always did. I'm going to see who's outside. Oh, Abe, you're just imagining things. It's a stranger. It must be. It couldn't be our boy after all this time. I can't help him, Matilda. I've got to find out. Who is it? Kurt! Ah. Oh, son. Ma, I've come back. I've come back home. And I've come back to stay. Oh, son, this is the happiest day of my life. And mine, Ma. And as long as I live, I'm going to thank the men who made it possible. Who was he, son? Don't know his name, Pa. All I call him is the Masked Man. I'll silver Just Heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.